Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome on behalf of the management of the Institute of Molecular Genetics. We are meeting here. We were one of the academic sites participating in the fight against the pandemic, COVID-19, and I hope we have contributed to containing the pandemic. Uh, at the Institute, uh, uh, we organized a check open screen, and during several days, uh, it uh, was transformed from a laboratory into a lab that could handle biomaterials, and we have processed over seven and a half thousand tests. Also in Bioset, uh, we also carried out a number of tests, so altogether 12,000 test samples from patients from points of collection. So when we started using the infrastructure, we were ready to test tens of thousands of samples, which didn't happen. So at the mo moment, the infrastructure is frozen, but of course we can reopen it. Thank you very much and enjoy. Uh, dear colleagues and distinguished colleagues, <laughs> ministers, I'm glad we can meet and I apologize uh, that uh, we are a bit late because of me, but uh, because of the railway incidents, I had to answer many questions, check television and so on. <coughs> But I wanted to speak about the situation, about what's ahead, and maybe to recapitulate the situation from the economic viewpoint, because also uh, regarding the Council for Research, Development, Innovation, it is expected uh, that the government and uh, uh, my ministry will try to uh, get uh, resources. In the coronavirus crisis, the trend that was set up in the past when we increased investment into R&D and innovation in a really significant way, and speaking here, this is really the Academy of Sciences in 2010, 11, there was a crisis in funding science, but then uh, we got about half a billion a year on year uh, increment, and about a year ago, we managed to reach the peak of 2008 and 9. And I'm saying this because without resources, there can be no research. So, and of course, we need more resources. There is so called GERD indicator. Unfortunately, we have moved ahead. It's 1.93% uh, now, which is quite a big amount from European resources and private resources of 100 billion crowns. So we also got almost to 2%, which is good. In Germany, there are 3%, South Korea is more, and so on. But let's be objective. It's not just about money, but research has to be first rate. So, we have set up uh, in V uh, a new system of funding, more generous system, and a different system of uh, evaluation or assessment. If we put more money into research, which is good news, and also we are more strict and demanding, so this is really uh, good news uh, twice, I would say. So it's also a matter where we put, where we place the resources. If it's basic or applied research, and I'm a layman, I think either uh, research is uh, good or not. So, of course, uh, logically, the success rate 
is lower in academic research. Um, so we have to decide whether to focus more on the applied sphere. <coughs> so there, the results must be really good. We have set up a framework called the Innovation Strategy, the country for the future. We uh, gathered uh, academicians, scientists, entrepreneurs, uh, government institutions, and they are in one club, so to speak. They will support and respect each other. It will not be based on uh, the fact that uh, there is either business or science, science with the intellectual potential and business making money. No, in fact, they need each other. So, one of my ambitions, because I think I was the, uh, the engine or driving force of this, is that we recognize mutually our positions, because the results of our research and uh, our companies are the results of all of us, uh, of the Czech Republic. So, we really have to fight together within one institution, and that institution, that is the Czech Republic. So, uh, also scaling is important, scaling of universities, and I'm sure the Minister of Education will also mention it. Uh, he's in charge, but in the Council for Research Generation, uh, this is one of the goals. And of course, not everyone is happy. We have scaling, is it objective or should be split it, to have disciplines and so on. It has to be improved, but at least the system has been introduced. We are not afraid to say someone is the best, and we have to be able to say that not everyone is the best. We must not be average and say, OK, we are not so uh, badly off, uh, but uh, we, always someone is the best, someone is mediocre, some, someone is under average. And if we say this is uh, an under average uh, institution, but it's uh, not a, a catastrophe, it's also uh, saying, OK, you should uh, improve, you should try harder. Uh, you don't have to despise the institution. So scaling of universities provokes emotions, especially in those who are maybe at the end of the ranking. But uh, what matters is that we have criteria. So uh, this is important for the evaluation and all the structures and all. And this is related to <coughs> research of quality. I could mention the new programs and so on we introduced at the time of the crisis. So we have <coughs> 8 million requests in applied research will uh, divide 1 billion. We may uh, add another. We have the programs, the country for the future, uh, technology program, and we have a we have huge resources. Uh, programs of application, innovation, cooperation, all that are R&D programs. <laughs> Applied research is uh, really focused on. We have to invest, uh, as, as I said, invest out of the crisis, to get out of the crisis. <laughs> Well, uh, I mentioned the railway accident, and of course, the railway is not uh, uh, concrete, and we don't put money just into railways. Uh, money also goes into R&D. It's not classical investment. It's uh, extra, and we are going to raise the funding for R&D, which is my duty. And during the crisis, we said, OK, let's invest and defeat the crisis. 
let's invest into innovations. And for well, the council, I'm going to present to the government a higher budget than we had. Out of 25 billion, we increased it and will still go up. So, also, with regard to the fact that we, of course, have this uh, huge deficit, but we are not going to forget our and we will allocate resources, of course, will be a bit more strict, demanding, so that the money goes to the institutions who do good work. So I am certainly not the one who uh, will calculate who is the first or the last in the first group and so on. Will be number three. Uh, but uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, in uh, research institute, in the infrastructure, we have to advance. So, anyway, so uh, thank you very much. You are right, I've been the longest serving Minister of Education in recent years. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to have the opportunity of welcoming you here after Mr. Havlicek's presentation. That was about the steps taken by the government so far. And uh, thanks for that, since the expenditure, volumes of expenditure have been pretty positive. But I'll try to take a different perspective. The long or oh, consistent massive investments in scientific infrastructure, large infrastructure, and I guess I can say that uh, the development over the last five years is something well known to me. We at uh, the uh, um, uh, Research Development and Innovation Council at Mayes uh, concluded it was still inadequate. Well, in the long run, we can uh, take, uh, do some measurements, or we can measure it, we can evaluate it, we can advocate or justify the developments. But uh, the essential thing, which uh, is great, has become visible and obvious and tangible now during the crisis, uh, COVID-19 crisis. Uh, the unexpected thing that means this uh, pandemic uh, was quickly responded to by you and many of uh, our other colleagues in, involved in research. Today, we'll see and uh, uh, how the response went. And it's uh, uh, an answer rather an argument for those who are very uh, pessimistic about the investments. We'll talk about the applied research, but uh, we first need the robust, uh, fundamental research. Only then we can uh, properly follow from that. And the examples that will be mentioned here present specific answers to all kinds of outstanding questions or questions saying that uh, higher education institutions, universities are black holes and are inefficient, do not deliver, etc. Well, we won't perhaps be amongst uh, or on top rankings, but it doesn't matter. The third important thing to underline is that scientific community, scientific ecosystem does work properly. And the funds that also, together with major interventions from ASIF, have um, paid off, if for no other reason than uh, because in medical sciences, social sciences, and also when developing face masks, uh, medical masks, etc., awesome, that is, uh, our republic, and you, our experts, manage to quickly respond. Now, if we say we'll uh, 
at massive investments in the research infrastructure now, but it would be perhaps too late. But thanks to our investments in the past and also massive top-ups from our national budget, thanks to that we were capable of quickly responding to the crisis, which is great, and we shall talk about it today. It would be sad and silly to lose that. That means to release um, uh, the food from the accelerator or gas. Uh, I agree with Mr. Havlicek that now uh, the time will come that will decide. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't um, I mean, speak in a political manner, but it is easy, of course, to spend when uh, there is a boom, but uh, um, research, development, innovation, education, uh, whether it is the priority of any respective state is clearly seen in the period of economic uh, decline or in a crisis. I'm sure that if we now slow down, we shall deny and reject all we have done uh, so far. This conference, which I thank you for, not only for speaking or presenting uh, this uh, during this conference, what uh, can be achieved, and you will present the benefits uh, that are the outcome of uh, investments. Uh, you will give specific examples uh, to our audiences, and I will only appreciate if we share with the general public uh, uh, this uh, kind of information and us. Uh, we are well aware of that. Well, once, and it has been proven clearly, as long as you have data, as long as you have capacities, it would be fitting to tap it, to exploit it. Because ahead of us is not only COVID-19, but all the research infrastructures, including large research infrastructure, is the perhaps latent but critical infrastructure of the state that can be used in a number of other um, areas. We have problems with land fund, uh, uh, drought, uh, climate change, uh, aging population, illnesses or diseases that, of course, uh, come and go, but doesn't, uh, and it of course doesn't have to be uh, an illness or pandemic like COVID-19. Well, we have to uh, far more or more intensively communicate with research community or researchers' communities. And it's not, um, uh, I mean, a fight for funds going to apply to uh, research, since uh, without a robust fundamental research, we could hardly do anything. And. Um, the challenges of today and of the future is something we have to be prepared for. Education, research, development, science um, has always been clearly called the investment in the future, but now we see uh, it is the investment in the current days. Uh, The truth is that the stress test is as yet not over, but uh, we'll have uh, to get used to it. Coronavirus has been with us, is, and will continue to be with us in the future, I am afraid. Nevertheless, let me thank, let me express thanks to the Academy of Sciences, to the um, Academia or Scientific and uh, Research Community for having contributed. Uh, I can see Mr. Konvalinka here. Uh, 
uh, button. It's not only him, many other people have uh, helped a lot. They have uh, rendered service, they have selflessly exerted efforts, etc. And it is not only a matter of projects, on a uh, state project, but also very active uh, approach uh, to the issue. Over a couple of weeks, new testing capacities have been built or developed, which uh, subsequently have not been fully used. But it was only thanks to the successful control of uh, the issue. Uh, fortunately, we have prevented the uncontrollable or uncontrolled uh, spread of the uh, disease or infection. Nevertheless, uh, if there is uh, this potential second wave that might occur in the autumn of this year, we will certainly use all the testing capacities and will be grateful for having them. Ministry of Health does fully support uh, research in um, healthcare or medical sciences. You well know that. I know mean, many of you are aware of that. Last year, we have spent 1.7 billion uh, crowns uh, on research, both uh, in the form of supporting institutions and also uh, through the Agency for Medical Research, um, through grants. Results have been very satisfactory, for sure. This field or discipline has always been given top priority. COVID-19 is um, not only about testing capacities or the fight against COVID is not only about testing capacity and testing facilities, but we shall also uh, put, announce a call for uh, other projects in the field of uh, that are associated with COVID-19 crisis has brought about many, many problems, many stress tests, uh, sleepless nights. But um, similar crises give us a chance to improve uh, or reach an improvement in a number of areas. And research and science is essential in this respect, which is why we have asked uh, the Research Development Innovation Council to um, earmark 100 million crowns uh, for tackling this uh, issue. And I'm happy we have this um, plan Professor Primrose, the plenipotentiary for uh, DNI, and uh, together with the Agency for Medical or Health research, we have been drawing up an agenda or program uh, in order to be able to have it published or publicized before the end of um, the summer. Uh, cellular molecular biology related um, projects, um, which means improving diagnostics and diagnostic procedures, which is where I see a major potential or gap, uh, faster diagnostics or diagnosing uh, improved uh, process of um, diagnosing the cases, which is important in case of mass testing, which will be the case in the future. We will have to live uh, with uh, the virus for some time still. But uh, primary care is uh, essential, especially in case um, of uh, persons who are suspected of uh, having COVID-19. But intensive care is also essential, well-prepared. Um, intensive care is important. You well know that we have managed to cope with um, uh, the problem at the um, intensive care units. Uh, we have done really well compared to other countries, but there still is room for improvement or rather development. Uh, mental health, for instance, uh, surgical procedures. Now, if you uh, refer to surveys all over the world, obviously, 
closely together with COVID-19. There is mental health uh, or the uh, mental health problems. Uh, since uh, the psyche has suffered the most in the course of uh, the crisis, uh, this has been our um, priority for quite some time already. And we have to focus on it again in research and development. Immunology, uh, the existence of uh, a geographical, uh, so to say, uh, distinguishing or distinct variants or uh, types of the virus and different geographical locations, all that is of interest. I will do our utmost to have the program announced or the call announced um, by the end of uh, the summer. Once again, let me express acknowledgments to the science or scientific community for their contribution, and I do look forward to the cooperation in the future. Thank you very much. Council, Mr. Peter Vosak, to take the floor. Good morning. It's always difficult to be to speak as the last uh, in the panel of those who welcome you here. So I have decided to present some sort of channel um, consideration or presentation of what we have been faced with. So, in spite of all the obstacles and issues brought about uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which has been very bad, of course, and severe. It has also um, brought about some pluses or positives. Uh, I read all kinds of um, journals or periodicals, and I concluded uh, there were three pluses or pros. Governments of many countries, more advanced countries, um, can realize that investments in research and development are certainly worth the while, are essential. And we heard that already during the presentation given by Mr. Havlicek. 1,000 different sources uh, donated uh, almost three a fourth of uh, a billion dollars, a billion dollars. Uh, for instance, NIH, uh, the Institute of, uh, uh, well, uh, increased the budget 1.5, four times 1.8 billion dollars they received as an additional sum uh, next to their budget, and that was due or as a consequence or simply of the pandemic. Research Research is focused uh, on attacking or rather grappling with uh, this um, urgent issue. If you uh, study COVID-19, you will realize that the mankind has never ever uh, met with such an inverted commas uh, smart virus, not only on this big genome, 300 bases, but uh, roughly but also since it has this uh, repair system or system re repairing mutations that oftentimes can help uh, to re uh, decrease the virulence um, as proofreading system. Or on the cells, it uh, spots or seeks or identifies the point of or site of entry, which is present uh, on all, almost all cells. And, one uh, American scientist wrote somewhere or said to some journalists that once he found the place of attachment of the virus uh, to the cells, uh, he couldn't sleep. He had two sleepless nights. Well, and uh, clinical signs or symptoms are so heterogeneous of this um, infection that we are really kind of lost. We um, do not know how to fight it. Therefore, it's very relevant to deal with it. Now, second 
the second conclusion. Uh, the face of science as to the accessibility or availability of information sources has grown. I, if you have summed up the number of publications and papers on COVID as of yesterday on Web of Science, if you take a scientific articles, there were 23,000 pieces, of which 82% of uh, the, in the open access um, regime. That means accessible to all. And um, in spite of all our efforts, uh, and uh, despite all the programs uh, impact. Uh, it's only 40% in other cases. So COVID has um, opened up a prevailing part of science. Out of this 23,000 publications, uh, uh, actually were published in the last month. So there is a huge increase in the numbers. The Czech Republic, and I'm not talking about testing, but about the science, like the structure of the virus and uh, ways to combat or fight uh, the virus. Well, the Czech science hasn't been that successful as yet. And um, perhaps this is due to the Czech systems of these 23,000 um, materials published or papers, ours were only 0.09%, uh, um, several dozens only, which uh, compared to Romania, which has 40, Nepal, uh, 41, and we have uh, 30 plus, so 35, I guess. So that's the uh, effect of life. Why? I don't know. Perhaps it's due to the rigidity of Czech scientists and more conservative approach, and also you know, um, the uh, demanding um, fact that you have to switch from one thing to another overnight. In Italy, the situation was almost the same before pandemic, but now uh, they have 2,000 great scientific uh, papers of the 23,000. For Czechs, uh, this is difficult, um, but it's also difficult because, you know, if you want to, uh, to ask grant agency for a change in the focus of some activity is troublesome or it takes time simply. Last positive uh, or last opportunity uh, I see in COVID is that it um, accelerated um, cooperation among the scientists um, incredibly. And that's obvious in the 82% of open access uh, of all the papers published. It is necessary to share information and to fight against that uh, together. It's not uh, like having one neutralizing antibody, um, uh, which was uh, published as uh, doing well or functioning well. Uh, well, tackle it. Simply cooperation or collaboration is a must, both at the stage of research and at the stage of clinical trials as well. It will simply necessitate global cooperation. And now the cons are that uh, there are some sort of uh, indications at uh, non-solidarity, lack of solidarity, like African countries uh, published or proclaimed some so to say, declaration that it should not be set aside, uh, that uh, they are afraid they are kind of sidetracked, side that they are um, out of the 
the mainstream and sidetracked in Africa. So in spite of all the horrors uh, brought about uh, by COVID-19, uh, there also are positive changes in the face of or uh, shape of science, uh, which I am grateful for. So I wish uh, you uh, fruitful deliberation.